In this mini lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about solving quadratic equations um, with a, a, a few different methods here. Um, factoring is something we've already looked at. Uh, the square root property and completing the square are, are going to be new here. Uh, remember, a quadratic equation, the important thing is that it's got this, uh, you know, it's got this x squared. So a quadratic equation, we've got to have a squared variable. Um, so we can also have a linear term. Uh, so this is a quadra the quadratic term with a second power, ax squared. The linear term, bx, that's where x is just to the first power, and then c is my constant. So we can write it in this form. It may start in a different form, like here in part b. Um, that doesn't look exactly like this because it's not equal to zero, but that would be pretty easy to fix. So the a, b, and c are just real numbers. Those are just numbers here. Uh, real numbers, so they can involve an i. I'm not going to have i x squared or 2i times x or anything like that. And it's important then that a is not equal to 0. If a were equal to 0, it would be 0 times x squared, and then the x squared term would go away, and then it would no longer be a quadratic equation. My highest power would be 1, and it would just be a linear equation. Um, factoring, this is just a little bit of review. This is how we've always solved quadratic equations. Um, when we have something here, like in part A, um, we try to factor. We look at this and say, okay, can I break that down into two binomials? Uh, we know the x squared has to be x times x. I need to get this negative 10. Uh, the fact that it's negative here means I need opposite signs. That's uh, pretty messy there. So I have to have opposite signs, 1 plus and 1 minus. So that means I need to multiply to equal the 10, but then have a plus and a minus to give me 3. So I think 5 and 2 is going to work here. Since I want negative 3, I want more negative than positive. So I'm going to do negative 5 and plus 2. And then we just set each factor equal to 0. So I'm going to get x minus 5 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. And then I'll just add or subtract. I'll add 5 to both sides. I'll subtract 2 from both sides. And I get these solutions. When I'm solving a quadratic equation, it's not essential to check those. But if you do check them, you'll see that they work, right? Plug 5 in for x. 5 squared is 25. 3 times 5 is 15. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. We could do the same thing if you plug in the negative 2, and you'll see that that works as well. Now, in this next uh, equation, um, it's not equal to 0. I need to get it equal to 0 to try to solve by factoring, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. That's going to give me then 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. And now when I try to factor it, the problem is with the 2x squared, I'm going to have to have a 2x and an x. So now when I look at making this 1 work, it's going to have to be, well, actually, that's pretty nice. The only way to get 1 is 1 times 1. It's just one of those is going to have to be plus, and one of those is going to have to be minus. So I think a little bit about what happens when I do outer and inner here. And I would get... Um, I'd get, you know, 1x here in the middle and 2x on the outside. If I'm going to put those together to get this middle term plus x, I need more positive than negative. So that means the 2 has to be positive and the 1 has to be negative. So the 2 has to be plus, the 1 has to be minus. So this has to be a minus there, this has to be a plus here, and then I set both parts equal to 0. I'll add 1 to both sides here, so 0 plus 1 is 1, then I'll divide by 2. Uh, here I just subtract 1, and I get those two solutions. Uh, finally, uh, in part C here, uh, notice there's no constant term. I just have my quadratic term, x squared, and my linear term, x to the first. I can solve this by factoring, but it doesn't factor the same way as parts A and B. I can't really use this binomial approach, but what I can notice is that these two terms have a GCF. I can take a 3 out and an x out. 
and then sort of play this what's missing. 3x times what is 6x squared? Well, 3 times what is 6? It would have to be a 2. x times what is x squared? It would have to be an x. And if I pull a 3x out of 3x, well, it's really 3x divided by 3x, and that would be 1. So it would be negative 1. And again, I set both parts equal to 0 then. 3x equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. If I divide by 3, x equals 0. I'll add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2. So my solutions are x equals 0, or x equals 1 half. Okay, so um, not all problems factor, and so um, one kind of property that I can use, I can use this thing called the square root property, and, and where we can see this coming from, I could solve x squared minus 25 equals 0 by factoring. I, I could say that's the difference of two squares, so x plus 5 times x minus 5. Uh, remember, if I do you know, outer and inner here, we get plus 5x and minus 5x, um, so those would drop out. So when I set both of these equal to 0, then I would get x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. But of course, that's then what leads to these two solutions. I subtract 5 from both sides here, I add 5 to both sides here, and I get these two solutions. Another way I could write this equation is right here. Um, I could start by just moving this 25 to the other side. I could add 25 to both sides. That gives me this x squared equals 25. And then if I take the square root of 25, I get 5. The thing is, I need both solutions, so I throw in this plus or minus symbol. Um, remember, you may not have seen this much before. But that symbol means I can either have a plus or a minus. And so both would be solutions. And that leads then to this sort of property. If I've got a squared equals b, and I'm trying to get a by itself, well, I can take the square root of a squared. The square root of a squared is just a, but then I get the square root of b. The thing is, I've got to remember this plus or minus. So this is what I sort of think. If you decide to take the square root, then you have to also throw in the plus or minus. So if a problem already has a square root in it, it doesn't have the plus or minus. Those were those ra uh, radical equations we've done before. But there was no square root at the beginning of this equation. You made the decision to put in a square root, so then you have to put in plus or minus. So, um, there are some equations that can't be solved uh, very easily uh, using the square root property. Oh, I notice here, um, sort of ignore this. Um, I was going to have the examples along with the mini lecture, and uh, I took them out. I'm going to have separate examples. So. And we can make everything look like a problem where um, we can use the square root property, it turns out. And there's this process called uh, completing the square. And I'm just sort of going through the process here. I'll do one example, but I'll have some other examples available in other videos. Um, so these are steps that we would follow to complete the square. Like I say here, um, some are not always necessary. So. The most complicated problem, we would have to go through all five of these steps. Um, uh, most of them, uh, we don't have to quite do all of them. In fact, uh, in this one right down here, I don't have to worry about step one at all, certainly. It says make the coefficient of x squared equal to one. Well, there already is a one here in front of x squared, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, step two says get the x squared and x terms on one side of the equation, okay, and the constant on the other. All right, so that's a problem here. So I want to move this constant to the other side of the equation. The way I'm going to do that then is very simply just subtract 4. So if I do that, I get x squared 
plus 6x equals negative 4. And now here's the crazy thing. Uh, step 3, take half the coefficient of x and square it. Then add this to both sides. Now, of, the word of here, when I'm talking about one half of something, or even a percent of something, that word of means times. So, one half of the coefficient of x gives me one half times the square root of x. Okay, one half times the coefficient of x, not square root. So one half the coefficient of x, one half times the coefficient of x, and then I square it. So I do that multiplication first, and then I square after, and I add that to both sides. Um, so to do that here, I need to figure out what that's going to be. So what's my coefficient of x? My coefficient of x is 6. So I'm going to take one half of 6 and then square that. Well, 1 half times 6, a half of 6 is 3, so that's going to be 3 squared, so that's going to be 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides of this equation. All right, so that's sort of my special number, I sometimes call that. So we get 1 half, we get x squared plus 6x, then we're going to say plus 9, and then we're going to get equals negative 4 was already there, but whatever I did to one side, I have to do to the other. And now I can clean that up a little. Negative 4 plus 9 equals 5. So I've done step 3. Step 4, factor is a perfect square. If you do step 3 correctly, what I end up with here should be able to be factored as a perfect square. That's something times itself. So x squared is certainly x times x. Where did we get the 9 from? You know, we got this 9 from 3 squared. So it's going to be 3 times 3. And then I've got plus 6, so it's going to be plus 3 and plus 3. So I can write this then as a perfect square. x plus 3 squared equals 5. Okay, so let me bring that up here. Now I can solve this using the square root property. I've got something squared equals 5. So I can solve that by taking the square root of both sides. But if you decide to take the square root, you have to throw in plus or minus. On one side, usually we do it where the, the simplest side. So the square root of x plus 3 squared, right, there's really a little, little index of 2 here. So since I have a square root of something squared, that cancels out, and I just get the x plus 3. Here I would have the square root of 5. I don't know what that is. And I also have to throw in plus or minus. So now to solve, to get x by itself, I would subtract 3 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So my solutions are negative 3 plus the square root of 5 and negative 3 minus the square root of 5. Uh, sometimes when you're asked to, uh, to solve an equation, you're asked to list the solution separately. Um, this is sometimes also perfectly acceptable as a way of writing your solutions. It sort of depends on the format. For instance, sometimes in an online homework system um, like MathXL, they're going to want the problems listed separately like this with a comma in between them. Um, other times you may see solutions where they're written um, this other way, uh, and both these are essentially equivalent. So those are some methods we can use to solve quadratic equations. Um, we're going to see that uh, there's one other method that's in another mini-lecture uh, called the quadratic formula.